first account we can look at is in the, the, the account of the flood that occurred in Noah's lifetime. It was at that time that those eight individuals were taken out of the earth and placed into the ark. So that's, the, that's a picture of the church being caught away from the earth at the end of the age. Our Lord likened that, he said, as in the days of Noah, um, when he spoke about the church being caught away. But at the same time, when that happened, God's judgment then fell. Now, when God's judgment fell, God destroyed all of mankind on the earth. It was roughly about six billion, I think, it's estimated at that time on the earth. Now, that whole population group was destroyed by God, including all of the children. They all died at exactly the same time as their parents did. The only difference between the two of them was is that when they died, their parents descended into hell, but the children ascended into heaven, for they were still children of God. And so that's the one account. The other account we have is when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Exactly the same thing transpired. God removed Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the type of the church being caught away. When that happened, the judgment of God fell, and everybody was killed, including all of the children. But again, the difference was between the children and the parents is that the parents descended into hell, the children ascended into heaven. And so that's how God deals with the situation. And so we come up to the end of the age. At the end of the age, when God's wrath is about to be poured out on the earth, God takes his church out. But at the same time, this time, God will now um, kill, really, all of the children on the earth and take them out in spirit. Just leave their bodies behind. But they will leave and they will ascend into heaven in spirit. And so that is how God will take all of the children out of the earth prior to his wrath being poured out on the earth. You said that the wrath of God was poured out on the children in Sodom and Gomorrah and on Noah's flood. Yes, that is the case. But it was over a very short duration of time. I mean, when the, the fire of God fell on Sodom and Gomorrah, it was over instantly. And when the flood came and people drowned, they, you know, within a very short space of time, people were drowned. Um, but the wrath of God, if you understand, and we look at the series that I've done on that, uh, that is over a three-year period. And so that God would not put children through that kind of punishment, because even... Although in that, uh, during that time, God does leave his 144,000 on the earth as witnesses, even halfway through that period, God removes his 144,000 when he brings the final bowls of wrath on the earth. And so God will not allow children to be uh, punished in that way. And so all children will be taken out of the earth at the same time that the church is removed. Now, we get to our Lord's millennial reign. And so people take that passage of scripture in Isaiah, those two passages, and they try and apply it to our Lord's millennial reign. And so they, they recognize that the church won't have children because our Lord said they'll ne neither marry nor give in be given in marriage. And so they understand that. And so what they do is they say, well, we, they, they've got to now come up with an explanation as to where the children come from that are referred to in Isaiah's uh, prophecy. And so they say, okay, it'll be all the unbelievers that will be on the earth. They will continue to have children during our Lord's reign. But if that were the case, then God would be unjust. You say, why is that? All right, we need to understand now um, the, how, why it is that we need to be born again. All of us are born into the earth. We're born from God. But we're all born into physical bodies that are descended from Adam. And the book of Romans teaches us this, and Galatians very plainly about this truth. And in these physical bodies, it dwells the sin virus in the blood, which is descended all the way from Adam. And so, although our spirits come from God, our bodies come from Adam. And these bodies that we dwell in are sinful in nature. So what happens is that all children, when they reach the age of 13, up until the age of 13, God does not hold children accountable for sin. They commit sin, but God doesn't hold them accountable. And at the age of 13, God says, all right, now you're not a child anymore. From here on out, you're accountable. And so the very first time they commit sin, what happens is their spirits die because they're born under law. Paul said it this way. He says, I once was alive um, before the commandment came, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. 
And so he's just acknowledging that when he was a child, he was spiritually alive before God. When he became accountable for his sin, he died spiritually, and thus he needed to be born again. And that is why we all need to be born again, because we all die spiritually. Now, bring that concept over into the millennium, and let's say that the unbelievers who will be living on the earth during our Lord's reign continue to have children. Those children, their spirits would come from God. Their bodies would come from Adam, still, because uh, their parents have their bodies still from Adam. Sin will still be in the earth during our Lord's millennial reign. A lot of people don't realize that. We're going to get into it in more depth as we go into the series. And so because sin is still in the earth, when the child during the millennial, uh, hypothetically now, if a child was born at that time, because they're born into sinful bodies that are desirous of committing sin, they will continue in sin. And when they reach the age of 13, they too would die spiritually and thus need to be born again in order to be saved. Otherwise, they would then be condemned to the second death. All their parents during the Lord's millennial reign, this is still hypothetical because I'm saying that there's no children, but I'm just dealing with the the weird teaching that says that they will be children, in, uh, that the unbelievers will continue to have children. All the unbelievers on the earth at, during our Lord's millennial reign will be um, condemned to the second death because they would have rejected the truth of the gospel while the church was still present on the earth. They will be unbelievers. And so when the church returns, they will not now repent and then be born again. They can't do that. They would have made their choice. Now, for children to be in the same state, they would die spiritually and they would need to be born again. But recall that I said to you that when the church returns to the earth, she's finite, she's complete. And so there will, is no more recourse for anyone to be born again, again, anymore. Because why is that? Because in order for one to be born again, one has to be baptized into Christ. One has to become a part of the body of Christ, and thus the bride of Christ. That cannot happen anymore. And so there's no recourse for anybody who dies spiritually to be born again. And so God would be unjust to allow children to come into the earth knowing full well that they have no recourse, and he would be condemning them to the second death at the end of our Lord's millennial reign. And so God's not unjust. And so that's why he does not allow children to be born into the earth during our Lord's millennial reign. And so from the time of the rapture, that is when the children will be taken out of the earth at the same time, until the end of our Lord's millennial reign, there will be no more children in the earth. So you say, all right, but then what happens to the, the population? Well, we'll have a look at the... Um, the population of the unbelievers now, but I just needed to get the point across that during our Lord's millennial reign, there will be no children on the earth. At the end of our Lord's millennial reign, when God the Father creates the new heavens and the new earth, it is then that God will allow children once again to be born into the earth through another population group which we're not going to touch on in today's teaching, because that's really for the next series because that's now pertaining to God's new earth. Um, but the reason that God will do that is because um, righteousness will dwell in God's new earth. Uh, 2 Peter 3 verse 13 tells us that. That's where righteousness will dwell. Righteousness will not dwell in the earth when our Lord Jesus Christ reigns on the earth. He will govern the earth in righteousness. And the saints will govern the earth in righteousness, but righteousness will not dwell in the earth because all of the people on the earth at that time will be carnal in nature. They will be un unregenerate, they will, they will be spiritually dead. And so sin will remain in the earth. We'll have a look at our Lord's reign in the earth to explain that concept. And so God in his um, justness will not allow children into the earth from the time they're taken out of the earth when the church is raptured until such a time as God creates his new earth. No children, children will be present or will be in heaven until such a time waiting for God to create the new earth. And then they will come down and populate God's new earth. And so that's just to put to bear the fact that there are no children on the earth during our Lord's millennium reign. 
Now, there is another grouping of individuals that will be on the Earth during our Lord's millennial reign. Let me just put this point to uh, bed right now. The unbelievers that will be on the Earth from the time that um, our Lord's reign begins until the time it ends will remain constant. That number will remain constant. You say, how does that work? Well, it works in this way in that death will not occur during our Lord's millennial reign. Because what God will do is for that period, God will extend the lives of those unbelievers in the earth. He did that in, prior to the Noah's flood, the flood during Noah's day. From Adam through to Noah, people were living close on a thousand years. God will do the same again. He will allow those um, unbelievers to live for the full period that our Lord Jesus Christ reigns on the earth. And so there will be no, no people added in, in that time and there will be no people diminished because the same number of people will, will remain on the earth under our Lord's reign. God will extend their lifespan to over that thousand year period. Again, he's done it before, he'll do it again. That's how we can understand the population group that will be reigned over by the church when she comes to the earth with our Lord. And so this, this other grouping of uh, unbelievers that are quite unique and we just need to touch on them that will also be on the earth when the church returns with our Lord. We pick it up in Isaiah 14 verse 1 and 2, uh, Isaiah 61 4, 4 and 6 and then Isaiah 31 8. Uh, Isaiah 14 verse says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will ch still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Then people will take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of the Lord. And they will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. And then Isaiah 61, 46, And they shall rebuild the old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the de desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of a foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. And you shall be named the priests of the Lord, and they shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. And then Isaiah 31 8. Then Assyria shall fall by a sword not of a man, and a sword not of mankind shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall become forced labor. And so this is a picture of the servants that will be given to the church when she comes back to the earth. That last passage of scripture talks about the, uh, then Assyria shall fall by a sword not of a man and a sword not of mankind shall devour him. That's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ de uh, destroying the army of the Antichrist with the breath, breath of his mouth at the Battle of Armageddon. And look at the result of that. And his young men shall become forced labor. And so we said in the, in the previous teaching that the, the fourth kingdom uh, would consist of the, the kingdom of the Antichrist. Uh, the, we said the population of the earth um, mankind on the earth, after the, the wrath of God is poured out, will be roughly about 4.5 billion people on the earth. That's if our Lord were to come in the year 2050, which he's not coming in the year 2050, but we just put out the number there to give us an idea. We said that of that, one quarter of the earth's population falls into the kingdom of the Antichrist. He would then draw his army from that population, and we said that army would be roughly about 600 million in number, and God would then deal with that army when, at the Battle of Armageddon. But that still leaves about 600 million um, citizens of the fourth kingdom left behind. Now, it, it is those individuals who will be made to serve the body of Christ when she returns to the earth. They will become our servants. They will become our maids. They will become our plowmen and our vine dressers. They will be put to forced labor because they won't serve us willingly because they will still have this um, carnal nature and no knee will really willingly bow to our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to return to the earth, which is why he will rule over them with a rod of iron. 
but we had then this grouping. Now that number could be anywhere from 300 million to 600 million individuals. The church we said will be roughly about 300 million strong, so very likely the number of servants would be at least 300 million, if not more. And so again, looking at a population that size, you're looking at um, a population of between six and 900 million people, well, you'd need a huge area, and so the whole Middle East area will be occupied by the saints and by their servants that will be given to them during that time when they come to the earth. And so that's the one um, people group that will be in the earth. The other remaining people group that will be in the earth are in fact then the other three kingdoms that will be in the earth. Daniel chapter 7 verse 11 and 12 says, I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and he, its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And so if you read that account in scripture, um, the prophet Daniel was shown four beasts that ascended out of the, the, the sea. Um, those four beasts pertain to four separate kingdoms that will be in the earth when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. The fourth kingdom being the kingdom of the Antichrist. That kingdom is the beast that was uh, given over to the burning flame in this passage of scripture. And so that's the kingdom of the Antichrist was destroyed when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. But the other three kingdoms remain, for the scripture says, their lives are prolonged for a season. That season being the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ and a time. There is a short duration at the end of our Lord's uh, millennial reign where they will still be on the earth. We won't touch on that now. But the scripture says, and they had their dominion taken away. So although these other three kingdoms will be on the earth, governing their own affairs, nevertheless they will be submissive to the rule and uh, rulership of our Lord Jesus Christ and his saints at that time. Now, if we take out from the 4.5 million, we, uh, billion, sorry, we take out the 1.2, 1.1 billion of the, the kingdom of the Antichrist, that leaves us with roughly 3.5 billion people living on the earth over which the saints will reign when they return to the earth with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's really the people that will be reigned over during that time. In Psalm 48, 1 to 7, it gives us a bit of insight into this um, grouping of individuals. Scripture says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is in her palaces. He is known as her refuge. For behold, the kings assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled. They hastened away. Fear took hold of them there, and pain, as a woman in birth pangs, as when you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. And so here we have a picture of the heads of state being brought to the city of Jerusalem when our Lord Jesus Christ sets up his reign from that city. And they will then at that time be informed as to what will transpire going forward, that they are now being um, ruled over by the Lord and by his saints and how they are going to be governed going forward. The scripture says that they were actually fearful when this happened. The scripture says fear took hold of them there and pain. Um, and so that's really what will be transpired. So Jesus will be putting down the rules and saying, guys, um, these nations are going to be reporting to Paul. These nations will be reporting to Peter. Uh, that's kind of what will take place. And this is how you will be governed from here on out. And so that's really how this uh, rulership will take place. And so that's why the scripture says their lives are prolonged, but their dominion is taken away from them. They will still govern themselves uh, on day-to-day -day affairs because it's the heads of state that get called to the city of Jerusalem and they get spoken to from that point of view. In order to get a brief uh, understanding of it, when uh, David conquered the territories around Israel at that time, a lot of them were... Um, the outside nations were made uh, subject to Israel and they had to pay tribute. So that will give you an idea. Look at another couple of scriptures that again just highlight how 
the church and our Lord Jesus Christ will reign over the unbelievers that will be on the earth during that time. Revelation 19.15 says, Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And then Revelation 2, 26 and 27 says, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall strike, he shall, he shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my Father. And so very clearly, both our Lord and the church will rule over these unbelievers with the rod of iron. Why? Because they will not willingly bow the knee to the Lord Jesus, and they will be forced to do so. And so it will you know, be a, a kind of a dictatorship from that point of view, because you know, the carnal nature will be rebellion. The Bible says about the carnal mind that it is enmity against God. It, cannot, it is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can, can it be. Now, all of those unbelievers will have carnal mindsets. And so they will struggle to be ruled in righteousness because the natural tendency will be to rebel against that. But nevertheless, because of the reign of Christ and his saints with the rod of iron, they will be submissive. And then there's one last uh, category of individuals we want to look at, and these would be conspicuous by their absence during our Lord's millennial reign, and that is the devil and all of his angels. We've already mentioned it before. Revelation 20, verse 1 and 3 says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. And so when our Lord comes to the earth and reigns on the earth, one of the, the major benefits to the earth at that time will be the removal of Satan, all of his angels, all demons will be taken out of the earth. And so all addictions will be taken out of the earth, all wars will be taken out. There will be no more, because don't forget that Jesus said about Satan that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so there will be no more motivation in the earth to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All of that would have been removed from the earth. And so that will be a blessing indeed. Isaiah 14 verse 5 and 8 says, The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the ruler, who struck the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted, and no one hinders. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. Indeed, the cypress trees rejoice over you, and the cedars of Lebanon say, Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. And so very clearly, the earth will be at rest, she will break forth into sin. Even the unbelievers will recognize that there's something missing. They don't understand it, but the, the saints obviously, obviously do. That because Satan and his angels have been removed from the earth, they can no longer influence mankind to do all of their wicked works. And so although the mankind will not willingly bow their knee to the Lord and his saints, Nevertheless, there will not be this motivation to go around stealing, killing, and destroying anymore because Satan and all of his angels will have been removed from the earth. And so those are the inhabitants that will be on the earth during our Lord's reign. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the church, uh, no children, all of the Lord's, uh, the, the church's servants will be there, and then all of the unbelieving nations will be there to be reigned over for the thousand year period. Um, of our Lord's millennial reign. And we're going to end the teaching on that point.